Hi there, we're going to spend a bit of time looking at another Edexcel paper 3 question, the 25 mark essays, where you're asked to explore and evaluate the micro and the macroeconomic implications, the effects of a particular change. Here's our question this time. We're going to take an example of an increase in VAT from the current level of 20% to 25%. Quick reminder of the Edexcel paper 3, 25 mark essay questions, it's marked on levels. Uh, you have two essays to write, one from section A, one from section B, and there's the breakdown of marks for 25 marks. Remember, define a key term in the question as best you can, and look if you if you have the time to build up to four KA points, four evaluation points, perhaps two main arguments on the micro side evaluated, two key arguments in the macro consequences then evaluated. In each case, try to build good chains of reasoning to explain the theory. Diagrams are extremely useful if you can build them in both micro and macro. Use the extract material judiciously and don't forget to come to reason judgments based on your arguments and perhaps asking some important evaluation questions along the way. So here's our question. Evaluate the possible micro and macroeconomic effects of a rise in VAT. Well, VAT is an indirect tax. It's a proportion indirect tax applied to spending on most goods and services. Since 2011, the standard rate of VAT in Britain has been 20%, but some goods and services, for example, domestic fuel and power, are just taxed at 5%. And some products, private school fees, postal services, the housing, uh, housing market, for example, housing rents, are exempt from VAT. So our essay will think about the likely impact of an increase in VAT from 20 to 25%. Quick reminder about how important VAT is. The, the bulk of tax revenues for the British government comes from just three main taxes, income tax, national insurance and VAT. VAT added about uh, uh, taxation worth about 6% of, of uh, GDP in 2016-2017. It brings in a lot of revenue for the government. So here are two points on the micro side, possible microeconomic effects. First point is that one micro effect of 25% VAT would be to increase the cost of living. Retail prices would go up, particularly if suppliers opt to pass on VAT to consumers. This allows you to bring in some micro analysis into your answer. So an increase in VAT 20 to 25%, of course it's an ad valorem tax. So that's gonna cause a pivotal inward shift of the supply curve. And if demand is price inelastic, if the elasticity is less than one, suppliers will then be able to pass on most of the increase in, in VAT without a big loss of sales. This is shown in my analysis diagram, which I'll show you in a second. So build some micro analysis about the impact on price and revenues. However, evaluation board, some firms, some businesses will choose to keep their prices stable or prices lower in an attempt to gain market share. Of course, this depends on how profitable the business is, uh, but in particular in an oligopoly, protecting market share is regarded as a key objective, perhaps almost as, almost as important as maximising profits. A second micro point is that lifting VAT to 25% from 20% could cause an increase in inequality because of the possible regressive effects on low-income families. I'm using some data, some evidence I, I have knowledge of here. Uh, VAT overall tends to have a regressive effect uh, it takes about 11% of the disposable income of households in the poorest 20% of the income distribution, but only about 5% of the income of the richest 20% of people. So the argument here is that uh, rising VAT would increase income inequality, a micro aspect, of course. However, evaluation argument, this effect depends on whether there's any change to the scope of VAT. So, for example, at the moment, children's clothing, food, prescriptions are not subject to VAT. So they would have little effect on those budgets. And indeed, if the Labour Party's proposal to, to apply VAT to private school fees was introduced, you could make a case for saying that's, that's more progressive. So an increase in VAT on luxury items, however defined, could actually have a progressive effect on income uh, inequality. So those are two micro points. And again, I'll talk about the diagram you could use on the left-hand side here. Uh, ad volume tax causes a pivotal shift in the supply curve and you can show quite clearly here what happens to the price and the quantity and you could also develop it to show the revenue but a good analysis diagram can go a long way to building your 
your KAA scores. What about the macro effects? Well, again, I'm going to try and build two points here. One is that a rise in VAT will lead to higher inflation uh, and cause a fall in real disposable incomes. And this in turn might cause a slowdown in GDP growth and perhaps rising unemployment. And then I use a little example that VAT makes things more expensive. So if we go from 20 to 25% VAT, a TV screen would go up by about £30. A pair of shoes would jump from £60 to £62.50. And I'm making a link that this would make life more difficult for millions of families who are just about managing. And perhaps a rising VAT would cause a fall in consumer confidence and, and, a, and a fall in spending. Consumption, of course, is the biggest single component of aggregate demand. However, the evaluation point uh, is that this depends in part on whether the increase in VAT is temporary or permanent. And crucially, whether wages and pensions and other welfare benefits rise in line with consumer prices. Yes, a rise in VAT would add to inflation, but it wouldn't necessarily be a permanent rise in inflation. A second point is that a rise in VAT would increase the tax revenue flowing to the government. That would help it to lower the fiscal deficit and eventually contribute to a lower level of national debt. Uh, and then supporting the point, uh, in the UK, VAT brings in about 17% of the total tax revenues every year. So a rise in VAT would increase the, the flow of money coming into the government and improve their finances. And this in turn would allow them either to borrow less, bring down the deficit, or perhaps use some of the extra revenue to spend more on improving key public services, such as the NHS, or perhaps extra funding for education. However, my evaluation point would be that instead of raising VAT to 25% to get extra revenue, the government might be better off widening the scope of VAT to include more items or focus its energies instead, change the policy instead of um, uh, raising VAT to cut VAT and corporation tax avoidance by businesses, which is clearly a major problem at the moment. So the argument there is instead of raising VAT, be tougher on tax avoidance. So we've built two micro points, we've built two macro points, we've tried to evaluate each in turn. Uh, it's really important to come to a final judgment. Here are some of the evaluation points you might want to consider. Uh, how high would VAT be in the UK if we lifted it to 25% compared to other countries? It would be amongst the highest in the European Union. It's 24%, for example, in Greece and in Denmark. A question you could ask is how much extra revenue would 5% on VAT bring in. Well, putting VAT on food, which at the moment is zero, uh, putting it to 20% would, would create £17 billion of tax revenue every year. But we have to think about the consequences for income inequality. If you raise VAT, could it lead to increased tax avoidance, uh, cross-border sales, particularly across the internet, for example, illicit transactions? Would it be a temporary change or long-term change in our tax system? If you lift VAT, would the government cut other taxes, for example, national insurance, to, to make the tax change neutral? And you could also think about the likely effects, for example, of high VAT on incentives to work in the labour market. So lots of things you should consider. VAT is important. I mean, VAT and duty together contributes around one in every four pounds raised by the UK government, about 10% of GDP. So a decision to lift VAT would have some quite important micro and macro effects. And that's why it would be a really good 25 mark question to ask in an exam.